we have a raucous audience in studio today. Hello and welcome to Build. My name is Simon Atkins. As always, we are live from London. And today, we're joined by, well, it's the devil himself. It is the star of Lucifer, Tom Ellis. Thank you very much. Lots of love for you in the room today, Tom. I know, I'm a bit, I'm a bit overwhelmed, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. We're going to be talking to you in just a second, but first, if you guys at home want to get in touch with Tom, ask any questions, or generally, just tweet us. Well, you can. Our Twitter handle is at BillSeriesLDN. That's at BillSeriesLDN. Or you can drop us a, um, a comment below this video on Facebook. We'll do our best to get those a little bit later on in the show. But first, Tom, very welcome to Build. Thank you very much for so having me. So the second series of Lucifer is upon us. How are you feeling about it? And please just tell us a little bit about it for those who don't know the, much about the this. The third series, series of the Lucifer. The third series. The second series has been it's and gone. gone. The third series. Oh, God, I got it wrong. I mean, it's still out there if you want to watch it again, which I it's, highly recommend, actually. It's a good one. <laughs> yeah, we're, I'm about to go um, to the States on Saturday. Uh, and we start shooting again July 17th. Amazing. Do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> fun times. Uh, it is. No, we, we, do, we do have a lot of fun making this show. Um, and uh, we're about to move our production back to Los Angeles, where the show's actually set. Okay. So that's quite exciting okay. um, for us. Uh, and I don't, I don't really have an awful lot of spoilers for season three, because the truth is I don't know an awful lot about it. So they don't tell you much about what's happening until I you get, go out there. I mean, I, I, got, I had a conversation with the showrunners last week that was sort of generic, sort of broad strokes about where we're going with it. What I would say is that um, in the first two seasons, we've had a kind of main adversary for Lucifer. In the first season, it was Malcolm, and in okay. season two, it was Mum. Uh, and in season three, it's going to be someone else. Da, da, da. <laughs> Who's it going to be? But I can't tell you who. <laughs> so we know that you play a consultant to um, the LAPD, and your partner in crime is, of course, Chloe Decker, played by the lovely Lauren German. Yeah. Before we talk about your relationship, shall we take a little bit of a look at the two of you in action? Okay. <laughs> Oh, this is just a little fisticuffs between friends. I just had a very enlightening conversation with Charlotte Richards. Ah, well, I've had my fill of enlightening conversations for today, thank you. Lucifer, she told me who she really is and how you two are related. I somehow doubt that. Well, it all makes sense. You know, why you were so disgusted when I suggested you two had slept together. Why you act so weird around her in general. She really told you. What did she tell you? That she's your father's ex. Right, yes, no, that's, that's true. Right, yeah. I mean, the way she talked about your dad and, and that what he put her through. Mm-hmm. Betrayal, torture, hell, etc. all true. Mm-hmm. I just cannot imagine raising kids with someone like that. Sympathy for the goddess, detective. <laughs> Woo! So, talk us through your relationship with, um, with each other in this series. With the detective. Um, <laughs> it's so weird. I, did, I, I went uh, and spoke at this thing in Rome a few weeks ago, and I didn't realise that this had become kind of a catchphrase for the show. And all these, um, detective. All these lovely European ladies were saying, please, they'll say you're a detective. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> they say it, and they were instantly pleased. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it was, um, so yeah, I mean, Lauren, I can't speak more highly of as, a, as someone who I work with. We, we laugh a lot. Uh, she and I have sort of been on this whole journey together since it started. And when you start these things, you don't really know where they're going. You just, you know, you sign up to do a pilot that you think is really enjoyable. And then, um, you know, and then you, if you're lucky enough, you go to series. And then, you know, if people start watching it and enjoying it, then you sort of feel like you're doing it for the rest of your life. Um, but in, in the best possible way, and Lauren and I work really well together. Um, I love the dynamic of her, uh, of, of the detective and Lucifer. I mean, that for me was one of the big hooks in the first place, because I think... Very witty, very funny. Exactly. And, 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 you know, one of those sort of relationships that reminded me a lot of, of things that I've enjoyed in the past, like, you know... Um, so I, I started out in the theatre, and one of my favourite Shakespeare plays is Much Ado About Nothing, and, and the, the back and forth between Benedict and Beatrice in that is, is you know, one of the mainstays of that play. 
And that was an opportunity to have that kind of dynamic with Lauren. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's how the cards fall. Who do they cast in these roles? And uh, is that chemistry going to be there? But was there an automatic kind of connection in chemistry when you guys started working together first? Yeah, there was actually. I mean, it was weird because we, we had a mutual friend, um, uh, an actor called Jesse Spencer, who I used to live with back in the day, back in right. London. Uh, and, and Jesse and Lauren had done a show together called Chicago Fire. So when she was um, auditioning for the role and Lucifer, Jesse contacted me and said, my friend Lauren's up for this part, you know, can you, can you do anything? I was like, well, I can't do anything, but uh, if, <laughs> you know, if it comes... I get on with her as well as I possibly can. <laughs> exactly. I, can I can be a friend. Um, <laughs> But, but so, you know, we sort of then, when she got the part, I was like, great. So I contacted Jess and we swapped numbers. And, and Lauren and I actually met up the day of the read-through, the first, the first read-through of the pilot. And there's a whole big, like, thing when you have these read-throughs. And everyone's there, people you don't know who, who are your bosses. Um, and we'd sort of, we bonded. We read the script together a couple of times before going to the read-through. And that was really good for us as our as a working relationship, but just as a kind of, like, you know, being on the same page sure. as people and how we wanted to approach it. And, um, you know, it just, worked. It, just, worked well. it, it just happened. And we do, you know, a lot of it is about the fact that we are able to have fun whilst we're working. Because I think, you know, the show, it doesn't take itself too seriously. And, you know, I, I don't take myself too seriously. I take my work seriously, but yeah. I take myself very seriously. And neither does Lauren. And so that's a lovely environment in which to be working. Let's talk about your character, Lucifer, Lucifer because it's obviously quite a surreal premise. How do you get into the character of Lucifer, and is it like just taking on any acting role? Uh, yes, it is like taking on the acting role. I mean, I, I approached it the same as I, I approach anything else, really, but I, what I didn't, I guess, maybe slightly naively, naively from my point of view, is that when I first started this job, I didn't really think about the gravity of what it was to play the devil and what, what, what baggage came with it. Uh, <laughs> Lots, I'm sure. <laughs> That's a fair amount. Who would have thought it? Um, no, I, I mean, do people think you're actually the devil when you're walking well, down the street? Th it was slightly worrying the amount of my friends when I told them I got this job. They were like, "Oh, you're perfect for it," and I was like, <laughs> what, this, "What does that mean?" Um, but I, I think you know, I, I approached it the same as I approach anything else. I, I didn't want to give it too much weight about him being the devil because we, what I loved about this particular version of this you know, devil character was we, we were telling the story about someone who happened to be the devil and didn't want to be the devil anymore. And that, that was a spin about it that I really loved and, and the, the sort of slow sort of humanization of this character with his experience with these people was, was something that I was, um, you know, there was like a fresh take on it and I, and I really enjoyed that. Um, in terms of like preparing and stuff, I mean, I've always used music as a big kind of like tool to help me. Like music's a big part of my life. I listen to a lot of music. I play a lot of music. And um, I create playlists for my characters. I was just going to ask you that. So do you have a playlist for the characters on Lucifer or just the characters that you I, perform? Uh, well, I, I've, got, I've got a playlist that like there are songs on there that will be like, I would say, like, oh, this song is for mum. Or you know, this is a this is a, a Chloe and Lucifer song. Right. Or this is about this particular mood. I mean, and it's like there's no there's no sort of logic behind the playlist other than it's kind of how I'm feeling at the time when I'm reading a scene or something just sparks off of me about. And it, but for me, it's a bit like a musical sort of mood board. And when I then listen to that song again, it immediately takes me back to a place where I've been thinking about that scene or thinking about a, a moment or just generally thinking about great rocking songs that could be in the show. So if you're about to do an intimate scene with a woman, what's your playlist? <laughs> oh, well, it just depends Exclusive. who the woman is, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I did it again uh, from that one. Uh, bit of Britney, bit of Britney, why not? Um, so just how did the role come about in the first place? Talk us through that. Well, um, so in the States, in network TV in the States, they have a thing called pilot season which is when the networks are sort of, I suppose, experimenting with, with potential series for the next year. Um, and um, it's around about sort of February, March time in LA, and it's, I call it, it's like a festival of auditioning. Right. It's basically every actor from everywhere Circus. just descends onto LA, hoping that fame and fortune is going to come <laughs> their way, um, and often leave crying. Um, <laughs> But I, I, you know, I've been doing it for a while. I'd just done a show there called Rush, which was a really great experience for me. And it was like my first sort of big you know, lead role out there. And whilst, um, we didn't do a, you know, whilst the show got cancelled after season one, it, I, I you know, 
it did a lot for me um, on the work front. And then it was the following pilot season. And I got sent a load of scripts, and a lot of them um, are kind of rehashes of scripts from the year before, <laughs> but just, just like, <laughs> set on a different planet. Um, and like none of them like really sort of tickled my fancy. Okay. And, um, then, and then I, I kind of I had my heart set on this one job, which didn't work out. And it, I was I'd flown to New York for the audition, and on the way back I was like dejected, and I had this scripts in my bag, and I pulled another script out and. And it was Lucifer, and I, and I looked at it and I thought, oh God, here we go, Lucifer. <laughs> this'll, be, this'll be interesting. And I, I probably assumed, like most people do when they see the name of the show, that it was going to yeah. be like this dark, dreary, kind of, you know, earnest thing about the devil. And, and it wasn't. It really, it made me laugh about four or five times by about page three. And, and um, I just, I immediately thought, this is it. This is the one I want to do. This is, this is the glove that's going to fit me. So it's been described as a police procedural comedy drama television series, which is a... You're going to have to work, an, ac a lot of have to work an acronym out for that, because that's just a mouthful, but yeah. But which, is there any particular genre that kind of like, you know, that you love about, about you know, this, this series? And I suppose you just did say the comedy element is... Yeah, I mean, comedy is a big thing for me, because I think, you know... Um, there's comedy in, in every walk of life. It's a big way of how we deal with situations. Humor is a big part of like diffusing stuff and kind of getting on with each other and all of those things. And uh, it's a big part of my life and I've worked in comedy a lot and I don't really want to step too far away from it if, if, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be doing something for a long time. And with this, it was like, well, it's got all of it. It's got comedy, it's got mm. drama, it's got like big action sequences, it's got music, it's like, you know, it ticked a lot of boxes and uh, I'm very, very aware of how lucky I am to be, you know. I mean, it's a, it's a huge series and it's doing really well, so congr congratulations, <laughs> you're doing great, isn't it? <laughs> Um, so your character is actually um, based on a DC comic character with the same name. But how much did you know about the character before you, um, you took on the role? Well, th this is where it gets embarrassing, because I, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> at all. I didn't have a clue that it was based on a comic book right. until after I got the job. And I was reading on, uh, they have a website out there called uh, Deadline, which sort of announces all you know, castings and things like that. And I was reading uh, you know, that sort of self congratulatory way. <laughs> Have I still got the job this morning? Yes, I have. Um, and then he said it was based on the DC comic book, and I was like, what? No one told me that. <laughs> and I felt, um, uh, uh, yeah, like a bit of a wally. Um, but also, I, I'm kind of glad that I didn't know that, because I, I'm not a huge comic book person. Um, and if I had known that before going in for the audition, then maybe it would have sort of altered my, way, my feeling about it. And not, not that I wouldn't want to do it, but altered the way that I might approach the part. Um, whereas I just sort of, my source material was the script I had in front of me and I, I enjoyed that script so much that I kind of knew what I wanted to do with it. So um, I didn't know it was based on that and then I found out afterwards it was and then very, you know, a very lovely gesture from Neil Gaiman who wrote the comics after he'd seen the pilot to, um, he reached out to me and told me how much he enjoyed it and basically that I had his blessing. So I was quite happy about that. You. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you sing in the soundtrack and you actually sing in the series. In actual fact, you were, I saw you singing in episode one of series two. But how did that come about? And are you a classically trained musician? I've, I hear that you play the French horn. All these musical questions. Classically trained. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 I so I grew up, my mum was a music teacher, so right. I grew up with music around me. And, um, you know, as, as, as you do when you're sort of surrounded by music and your mum's a music teacher, you get allotted an instrument. So I don't have a lot of choice about it. <laughs> Mine was I, the flute. Yours was the so flute, you know, was it? Mine was the flute. Oh, lovely. Well, I got, was I got, yours? I got the, when I was about that big, I got a cornet. <laughs> and then I upgraded to the trumpet when I was that big. And then for some reason, my parents made an executive decision that I could go a lot further in life if they swapped it for the French horn. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, of course, because you have that on your list of qualifications on many jobs. Um, so, I, so I started playing the French horn. I played a lot in orchestras and, you know, music was my life. And then also the other side of my life was I grew up in the church, rather ironically. Um, and Did you play music in the church? Well, I, yeah, I, play, I did. I played drums in the music group because we were quite progressive. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I also sang a lot. Um, and... You know, it was weird because when I was, when I started acting, I didn't really, I didn't really sing. You know, I was a classically classically trained actor, um, but I wasn't um, a musical theatre actor. And there's a very sort of big divide um, initially when you start you start out in your career about which path you're going to take. And I, I just was going down the straight acting path, but then 
I always enjoyed singing, and, and any t- any opportunity I've had, I've you know enjoyed it. And um, <laughs> we on the show initially, it was just Lucifer playing piano, and he had this you know appreciation of music. And then we were out on a social, at a karaoke night <laughs> with, the, with the producers <laughs> after the pilot had come out, and um, my, my my writers were like, "We didn't know you could sing." We didn't know you could sing at all. Um, so they just started writing it into the show. Amazing. Um, well, it works very well. Well, I, I, do, I do enjoy it, and I'm glad that people have responded to it. <laughs> and your voice is all right. <laughs> My kids don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, so as we know, most of the, the series is set in LA. You are from Wales, and you live in London. But how do you compare working in, in LA to, to London? And how do you stay grounded in the bubble that is La La Land? Or, or do you? <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I, um, I do, uh, but mainly because I'm the age I am, and I, you know, I'm not like 21 years old going out there and doing it. I, I think a lot of it, you know, a lot of my grounding is to do with my life outside of acting. My kids and, you know, my family and um, my fiance now, and, you know, they, they sort of, um, they keep me in check. Um, and I, again, you know, I'm, I'm, I, it's happened to me at a time in my life where I think I was ready to take it on. Sure. Um, and if I'd been younger, yeah, I don't know. I might not be here talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you particularly miss about the UK or London when you're away? Yes, you architecture. <laughs> <laughs> Culture. <laughs> Culture. No, I, I mean, it's stra- it, is, it, it, I mean, it was the thing that first sort of struck me when I went to LA was how kind of ugly it is as, as a yeah. place compared to, I mean, London's such a beautiful city and there are many beautiful cities in the UK and we're spoiled with the culture and heritage here and there isn't so much of that. Certainly on the west side of America, it's a very new country, mm. you know, in the western sense. Um, and so you know, getting my head around that was very different. But, you know, there's, uh, I mean, food there is incredible. Um, and people are obsessed with it. And that's all they talk about. It's where yeah. you ate yesterday and where you're going to eat tonight. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, getting my head around that sort of thing. But essentially being on a set is the same anywhere else you're going to be. There's just a lot more people on, over there. But that's mainly because we're trying to film so much in such a short space of time. So, but when you, so when you finish filming, are you like, get me home. I want to just be back in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> My familiar well, I don't mean that. I, listen, I love, I love it over there, but I do, I mean, my family are here and, you know, my children live here, sure. they're at school here, so it's, you know, I, I have many reasons to come back here, but I do, I do love the UK and I love London especially, um, and I will always, you know, have a home here, so it's not like I've decided to be American for the rest of my life, <laughs> certainly not at the moment. <laughs> So the level of production on these um, kind of US series are absolutely huge. And for the pilot of this, you shut down Hollywood Boulevard, I read. Uh, personally. <laughs> yes. Personally shut down. Shut it down. <laughs> Go away, you weird I spider. I have arrived. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was, I mean, that was, I, I have had, since we're, since we're doing a few jobs over there, I've had a couple of pinch me moments, well, quite a lot of pinch me moments, certainly on the pilot of this. And um, it's crazy, like shutting down Hollywood we, Boulevard. We, we, and not just like any section, it was the, like the main section of Hollywood Boulevard where they have the Oscars between, you know, these two sections of road because we had this, this big night shoot that we did in the pilot. And, you know, huge stunts going on. And Len Wiseman at the helm is a big movie director. And, you know, I sort of got dressed in my Lucifer outfit and put the, the eyeliner on and all that. And then they went, this is your car. And I just went, I mean, <laughs> 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 it's ridiculous. <laughs> And at the time, like loads of people just watching a shooting who didn't know what, because the, the show hadn't been out then. Sure. So didn't know what the show was or anything. They were just going, woo! And I was in the car going, yeah! <laughs> and, what are you shooting? Lucifer! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you find doing those big scenes and those stunts and stuff like that? Is it daunting or are you kind of just like used to it now? Oh, I mean, I'm doing the big stuff like the stunts and whatever. I mean, I normally want to do more than I'm allowed to do. Um, and they're always so like, well, you know, planned out and well prepared you always feel like you're being looked after um yeah i mean it, it, it just that it, it's that was new for me doing stuff on that sort of scale um but it was really exciting mm. you know and that's I, i'm still like a little kid a lot of the time i still can't believe i get paid to do this <laughs> um but i just you know i've always enjoyed acting since i started doing it and the, the bigger the, the project and whatever i just get Really excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, your executive producer, Jerry Bruckheimer, described you as, I need to get this right, devilishly handsome, intelligent, and effortlessly elegant. <laughs> Woo! 
How have you found your sex symbol status raise <laughs> even more since you have taken on this role as Lucifer? Well, How Jerry, do you deal Uncle, with Uncle Jerry has never seen me in my onesie. <laughs> so that's why he can make that statement. Um, I, uh, I mean, it, it's, I don't know where to, how to answer that question because it's kind of like I'm, <laughs> I'm bowled over by people's kind of like response. Um, and I don't know, I get a bit embarrassed and giggly. <laughs> I can't start up. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's fun. I mean, I look, uh, it's important to remain grounded and all those things, and it doesn't change anything about me that that's people's perception, and obviously that's fed towards people as well with, you know, uh, media-friendly sound bites about who, what the show is and who the character is and all that. But, uh, you know, if people want to call me sexy, <laughs> I'm not going to say don't do that. <laughs> Just maybe a bit louder in front of some other people. <laughs> Can we just talk a little bit about the, the fun on set with your co-stars? Obviously, Rachel Barnes plays your psychotherapist, and then you've got DC Woodside and uh, your other co-stars. What is the fun at, at, like on set? Um, uh, we, we laugh. I mean, there's a lot of jokes that I can't say on camera. You know, we do, we do all have kind of like childish senses of humour. Um, and, you know, we, we try and play little jokes on each other and, and stitch each other up. And if it's someone's birthday, you know, try and get as many balloons as it's possibly <laughs> you can into someone's trailer. Maybe um, fill up Hollywood Boulevard, which is a load exactly. of balloons. I mean, one, uh, one thing in particular, uh, I remember... <laughs> we, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this. Well, I can't, I can't remember say his it. name, but we did have a guest actor on it who... I'm quite a tolerant person, and I like people. This person just <laughs> happened to wind me up a little bit for some reason. Um, and um, there, as part of, <laughs> I can't remember. Really <laughs> as part, as part of like their role on the show, um, there was some uh, cardboard cutouts of this particular character, and I walked into my trailer one day. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god! <laughs> And all the cardboard cutouts had been put in my trailer in various positions. <laughs> when I'd finally cleared what I thought was all of them out, I then went to go and use my toilet. <laughs> it was a tiny thing. And there was another one in there. That was a, that was a classic Lauren German uh, <gasps> stitch. Oh, lovely. Well, listen, we'd, I'd love to talk to you for hours about this series, but obviously we don't have enough time to do that. So I need to throw it to the audience for some questions before we go. So who has question number one? Ooh, ooh, what have we got? Contestant number one. Hello. <laughs> What's your name and where'd you come from? Oh, well, my name is Jason. Hello, Jason. I come from South East London. Lovely. Lovely. My question for you is, what's been your most devilish moment on or off screen? <laughs> <laughs> my most devilish moment? Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I guess one of the things I have in, in common with Lucifer is I've got a bit of a naughty sense of humour and I like, you know, pranks. Um, I've grown up a bit now, but back in the day, I did this movie. It was one of my first jobs, and it was all blokes. And it was a, like an army movie, and it was about soldiers being bored. And uh, you can imagine that there were lots of pranks that used to happen, one of which was the age-old prank of if someone got like a sort of custody dessert at catering, they'd, you'd go, they'd go up to you and say, does this smell funny to you? And you'd go like that and then do that, right? <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> On the next job I did... Uh, I took that little nugget of, of humour and um, I, was, I, was, I was really friendly with, um, like with, with all the crew, but we had one girl in particular who was one of our runners and she was so much fun and we used to like, like joke around and whatever. And then I, we got trifle one day for dessert and I thought, oh, hello. <laughs> oh, the cogs start turning. She comes onto the catering bus in front of everybody with her trifle and I leaned over and I said, does that smell funny to you? And she did it and I went like that. <laughs> And it was, like, I'm not joking, it was priceless. <laughs> like, you, you, this full white cream, breaking the crust of the cream to open her eyes. And I'm just waiting for everyone to burst into hysterics. And then she just bursts into tears and runs off the bus. And everyone is like, fucking hell, Tom. <laughs> oh, my God. And we told him not to curse I'm so sorry. This. And that was, that was other people saying that to me. Just, everyone was like, dearie me, Tom. Um, <laughs> and I felt about this big, and I had to grovel for like two days with to go and find it on, I'd buy flowers and all sorts. It was a and you went way down in the sex. Yeah, outside. I did. I did. Way down. I did. I had a lot of clambering to do after that. <laughs> right, who's got the next question? Oh. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm Karina from Venezuela, and I wanted to ask you um, your character uh, makes people tell their most desires. So. 
What's your guilty pleasure? My guilty pleasure? Mm, yes. Oh, gosh. Probably X Factor. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Great I'm so answer. excited when they go to judges' houses. <laughs> um, I, don't, I mean, guilty pleasure, I mean, I still smoke, which is, I, I, it's terrible, and I know that, and um, lots of people tell me how terrible it is, including my children now, um, and that is something that I need to do something about, but I, um, I mean, where do I start? <laughs> I've got, I mean, one of, the, one of the challenges I find on this show is that I, I have to sort of keep myself in shape for the show, and I am terrible, as people know about me that know me well. I love sweets, I love crisps, preferably late at night, you know, and I just, I'm, I'm, my, my diet, I need to be really strict with myself, otherwise I'm not good. Does that answer your question? It's a boring answer, I'm so sorry. Sweets not and allowed chocolates. to swear. <laughs> right, who's got the next question? Hello, uh, this one's from Twitter. My name's Audrey. Um, if you could have a cameo in any classic British sitcom, which one would it be? Ooh, classic mm. British sitcom. Uh, well, I mean, I used to watch Dad's Army all the time with my granddad when I was growing up, and that was, that was like, I, I just, that just was comedy to me. I just thought it was brilliant. And um, I'd love to have been in that. It was great. And we were lucky enough, actually, when we were shooting Miranda to film on the sta in the same studio as Dad's Army. And we were the last sitcom to shoot there before the BBC closed down. So we had this kind of like emotional night where we talked oh, wow. about the things that had happened there. But I grew up watching a lot of sitcoms. Um, so something like Dad's Army or Only Fools and Horses, you know, keeping up appearances. I could go on. Last of the summer, <laughs> last of the summer wine in a few years. <laughs> Listen, we have to ask about Miranda before we leave. Obviously, people know you best by, from playing Gary Preston in Miranda. Um, you guys have hinted at it possibly coming back in the future. Is that... Correct. <laughs> We're talking about it. Yeah, no, we are. We are uh, uh, at the moment. It's difficult. It's just about scheduling and, and getting us all together in the same place. But um, we are talking about doing a few bits more in the future. Okay. That's as much does, as I can tell you at the moment. So does that mean a new, another series, or would you ever like? Would you ever think of adapting it into a film adaptation well, out of we, the office or anything like that? We 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 actually did talk about doing it a, as a film, and it was quite a sort of tangible thing for a while, but. Um, ultimately, what I love about Miranda, Miranda the person, um, is that she is really hot on quality control. <laughs> right? No, I, and, I'm, and I think that's brilliant because over in America, they don't always get, they're always like, why do you only do six episodes in a season? And Because we're not like, financially driven in the same way that they are over there. Um, and, you know, Miranda, uh, I think, you know, if some people had had their way, we would have done many, many more series of Miranda. But Miranda writes that show on her own, and that's the reason it's so good. Wow. And she just is not happy to settle for something that doesn't feel right. And I think, actually, going back to Dad's Army, this is a really good example. When I was a kid, Dad's Army did a movie. And the Dad's Army movie, I couldn't get my head around or understand because it didn't have a live studio audience. And that was a big part of what that show was. And it's a big part of what Miranda is as a show. And if you do a movie of it, you can't have your live studio sure. audience. And it sounds strange, but it's kind of part of the chemistry of that show. So we just kind of decided that was, was not the way to go with it. Well, let's hope we see another Miranda sitcom series on <laughs> screen soon. And not the movie. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Ellis, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for oh. today. Lucifer seasons one and two are on Amazon Prime Video now. If you haven't seen it already, go and watch it. It is very funny. Give it up one more time for Tom Ellis. Thank you.